Hello friends, welcome to this channel again and today we will discuss dry lean concrete for concrete pavements. Dry lean concrete is an important part of modern rigid pavements. It is a plain concrete with a large ratio of aggregate to cement than conventional concrete and generally it is used as a base or sub base of a rigid pavement. The base is provided to have a uniform, stable and permanent support to the concrete slab. And the base should have sufficient strength against disintegration and erosion under heavy traffic and adverse environmental conditions. DLC satisfies all these requirements. IRC SP 49 2014 provides guidelines for use of dry lean concrete as sub base in rigid pavements and it says that DLC sub base should be extended beyond the pavement edges by 500 millimeter to facilitate further construction operations and provide an adequate support for the concrete slab. This extra width also facilitates the movement of paver tracks on the extended DLC. This offset will be 200 millimeter in case of semi-mechanized or manual construction. Minimum thickness which is specified for national highway and state highway is 150 millimeter and for other categories of the road, the thickness of DLC should be 100 millimeter. The constituents for DLC are same as for any concrete that is coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, cement and admixture. This cement can be of any type, it can be ordinary Portland cement as per IS 8112 or IS 12289. It can also be Portland Pozzolana cement as per IS 1489 part 1 or it can be Portland slag cement PSE as per IS 455. Now if the soil around has soluble salts like sulphate in excess of 0.5%, the cement shall be sulphate resistant and it should be tested as per IS 12330. The coarse aggregate will be natural aggregates conforming to IS 383 and these aggregates should be clean, hard, strong, dense and non-porous pieces of crushed stone or gravel. The maximum size of aggregate which is specified for DLC is 26.5 mm and it should be Tested for physical characteristics like Los Angeles abrasion value that should not be more than 35%, water absorption value should not be more than 3% and similarly impact value and flackiness index value can also be estimated. The fine aggregate will be clean natural sand or crushed stone sand or a combination of sand and crusher dust confirming to IS383. The grading of aggregate as specified in IRC SP49 is maximum size of aggregate 26.5 mm and nominal size of aggregate 19 mm and this is the grading of the final aggregate when mixed coarse aggregate and sand. Water, water will be clean portable water as per IS456. The pH value of water for mixing and curing up to 9 is permitted. And the mineral admixtures are also suggested in IRC code. It can be either fly ash or it can be ground granulated blast furnace slag. When fly ash is used, it should not be more than 15 to 30 percent of cementitious material. And when this GBFS is used, it can be 25 to 50 percent by weight of cementitious material. And it is as part of replacement of ordinary Portland cement. Now, when you are using fly ash or GBFS, ordinary Portland cement content should not be less than 100 kg per meter cube of the concrete. And the fly ash shall conform to IS3812 and GBFS to IS12089. The design of DLC mix is not comparable with the conventional concrete mix. Here, water cement ratio is not the criterion for the design of the DLC mixture but it is the optimum moisture content to guarantee the total compaction of concrete in field. And I will explain this design procedure for DLC in six simple steps. 
the first step is to test the aggregate and water for their physical properties and as i told you aggregate should be hard natural stone aggregate and they should conform to certain requirement of strength like loss and abrasion value or water absorption once you declare that aggregates are suitable then second step is proportioning of aggregate to get the desired grading and generally the aggregates which are available at site are of 20 mm 10 mm and fine aggregate that is sand it can be natural sand or it can be crushed stone dust so you proportion these aggregates by any method to get the desired grading as per irc code and in one of my earlier videos i have explained three methods of proportioning of aggregates trial and error method analytical method and graphical method and you can use any of these three methods to get the desired grading so this is the desired grading as per irc code and i have added here another column which is the midpoint of this grading so target of proportioning should be the midpoint grading so once you get the proportion of different aggregates then the third step is concrete mix design now the concrete mix shall be proportioned with a maximum aggregate cement ratio of 14 is to 1 where opc is used and 12 to 1 when ppc or psc is used the minimum cementitious material content shall not be less than 140 kg per cubic meter of concrete and the fly ash or gbfs content shall be 15 to 30 percent or 25 to 50 percent by weight of cementitious materials respectively as i told you earlier also the quantity of water in dlc is decided based on compaction curve and not on the basis of water cement ratio as in the case of a paving concrete too much water will get concrete stuck in the roll drums and too little water will lead to inadequate compaction and it may also lead to segregation of the mix therefore optimum requirement of the water is decided based on the optimum density and for that trial mixes of dry land concrete are prepared with water content of 5% 5.5 6 6.5 .5, 6 and 7% of the total weight of the material optimum moisture and density is established by preparing cubes with varying moisture content and moisture density curve is drawn specimens will be compacted by special vibratory hammer the field obc may be increased by 1% if the concrete is to be laid in the main carriage way to compensate evaporation loss during transport say for example the compaction curve of the concrete is like this so here you can get the optimum dry density that is the maximum dry density and corresponding to this you get the optimum moisture content so let us assume that this is 6.2% and this is 2.512 g per cc or 2512 kg per centimeter cube now the next step would be calculation of material for 1 meter cube of the concrete so we assumed that omc is 6.2% and maximum dry density is 2.512 g per centimeter cube or let us say 2512 kg per meter cube so corresponding to that if you take aggregate cement ratio of 14 is to 1 as per irc sp49 2014 the quantity of cement will be 2512 divided by 14 that is 179 kg and as irc says the minimum cement content should be 140 kg per meter cube and therefore this is more than 140 kg so it is fine and remaining will be aggregates so total aggregates will be 2512 minus 179 kg cement that is 2333 kg now this 2333 is to be further proportion based on size of the aggregate and let us assume that the aggregates which are to be mixed at site are 20 mm 10 mm and sand 
and the proportion which you get from any method of proportioning is 25 percent 20 millimeter size 35 percent 10 millimeter size and 40 percent sand so we divide this 2333 kg into aggregate of 20 millimeter is 25 percent that is 583 kg aggregate of 10 millimeter that is 35 percent 817 kg and sand is 40 percent that is to 933 kg the water will be 6.2 percent of dry density that is 155 liter now if you add all these values 155 plus 933 plus 817 plus 583 plus 179 that will give you the wet density of the concrete and this is the dry density of the concrete so next step would be determination of strength now at OMC and MDD cast 5 cubes of 150 millimeter size and determine their cube strength that is crushing strength after 7 days. This average cube strength should not be less than 7 MPa as per IRC code. If DLCB is to be used as base or sub base in concrete pavement, its average cube strength should not be less than 7 MPa. That means this concrete should be of the grade M7. And in addition to compressive strength of any individual concrete cube should not be less than 5.5 MPa at 7 days. So average should be 7 or more and individual strength of the cube will be 5.5 MPa or more. Now if the concrete does not provide desired strength then cement content will be increased and steps 4 to 6 will be repeated. Step 4 is determination of optimum moisture content and maximum dry density. So we again go to that step after increasing cement content. After that, you calculate the material for 1 meter cube of concrete and then come to the step 6 determination of cube strength. And this will go on until you get cube strength after 7 days equal to at least 7 MPa. The design report will include physical properties of aggregates, type of cement to be used, OPC, PPC or PSC, the proportioning of aggregate that is the amount of cement, amount of coarse aggregate, amount of fine aggregate, amount of water. Results of OMC and MDD in the form of a graph or compaction curve and then calculation of quantity of ingredients for 1 cubic meter of concrete and then what is the value of average 7 days cube strength. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your comment in the comment box.